the spinning wheel song by john francis waller from the world's best poetry volume two love part two read for LibriVox.org by anusha ayer as the narrator jason in panama as the grandmother thomas peter as eileen and sonia as the lover the spinning wheel song mellow the moonlight to shine is beginning close by the window young aileen is spinning bent over the fire her blind grandmother sitting is croning and moaning and drowsily knitting aileen achora i hear someone tapping tis the ivy dear mother against the glass flapping aileen i surely hear somebody sighing tis the sound mother dear of the summer wind dying merrily cheerily noisily whirring swings the wheel spins the reel while the foot's stirring sprightly and lightly and airily ringing thrills the sweet voice of the young maiden singing what's that noise that i hear at the window i wonder tis the little bird chirping the holly bush under what makes you be shoving and moving your stool on and singing all wrong that old song of the coolin there's a form at the casement the form of her true love and he whispers with face bent i'm waiting for you love get up on the stool through the lattice step lightly we'll rove in the grove while the moon's shining brightly merrily cheerily noisily whirring swings the wheel spins the reel while the foot's stirring sprightly and lightly and airily ringing thrills the sweet voice of the young maiden singing the maid shakes her head on her lip lays her fingers steals up from her seat longs to go and yet lingers a frightened glance turns to her drowsy grandmother puts one foot on the stool spins the wheel with the other lazily easily swings now the wheel round slowly and lowly is heard now the reel's sound noiseless and light to the lattice above her the maid steps then leaps to the arms of her lover slower and slower and slower the wheel swings lower and lower and lower the reel rings ere the reel and the wheel stop their ringing and moving through the grove the young lovers by moonlight are roving end of poem this recording is in the public domain the welcome by thomas davis from the world's best poetry volume two love part two read for LibriVox.org by Lian Yao. The Welcome Come in the evening, or come in the morning. Come when you're looked for, or come without warning. Kisses and welcome you'll find here before you, and the oftener you come here, the more I'll adore you. Light is my heart since the day we were plighted. Red is my cheek that they told me was blighted. The green of the trees looks far greener than ever, and linnets are singing true lovers don't sever i'll pour you sweet flowers to wear if you choose them or after you've kissed them they'll lie on my bosom i'll fetch from the mountains its breeze to inspire you i'll fetch from my fancy a tale that won't tire you oh your steps like the rain to the summer vexed farmer or sabre and shield to a knight without armour i'll sing you sweet songs till the stars rise above me then wandering i'll wish you in silence to love me We'll look through the trees at the cliff and the airy. We'll tread round the rath on the track of the fairy. We'll look on the stars and we'll list to the river. Till you ask of your darling what gift you can give her. Oh, she'll whisper you, love as unchangeably beaming. And trust when in secret, most tunefully streaming. Till the starlight of heaven above us shall quiver. As our souls flow in one down eternity's river so come in the evening or come in the morning come when you're looked for or come without warning 
kisses and welcome you'll find here before you and the oftener you come here the more i'll adore you light is my heart since the day we were plighted red is my cheek that they told me was blighted the green of the trees looks far greener than ever and the linnets are singing true lovers don't sever end of poem this recording is in the public domain Fetching Water from the Well by Anonymous From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 2, Love, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Craig Franklin Fetching Water from the Well Early on a sunny morning, while the lark was singing sweet, came beyond the ancient farmhouse sounds of lightly tripping feet. Was a lowly cottage maiden going, why, let young hearts tell, with her homely pitcher laden, fetching water from the well. Shadows lay athwart the pathway, all along the quiet lane, and the breezes of the morning moved them to and fro again. Or the sunshine, or the shadow, passed the maiden of the farm, with a charmed heart within her, thinking of no ill or harm. Pleasant, surely, were her musings, for the nodding leaves in vain sought to press their brightening image on her ever busy brain. Leaves and joyous birds went by her like a dim, half waking dream, and her soul was only conscious of life's gladdest summer gleam. At the old lane's shady turning lay a well of water bright, singing soft its hallelujah to the gracious morning light. Fern leaves, broad and green, bent o'er it where its silvery droplets fell, and the fairies dwelt beside it in the spotted foxglove bell. Back she bent the shading fern leaves, dipped the pitcher in the tide, drew it with the dripping waters flowing o'er its glazed side. But before her arm could place it on her shiny wavy hair, by her side a youth was standing. Love rejoiced to see the pair. Tones of tremulous emotion trailed upon the morning breeze, gentle words of heart devotion whispered neath the ancient trees. But the holy blessed secrets it becomes me not to tell. Life had met another meaning fetching water from the well. Down the rural lane they sauntered, he the burden pitcher bore, she with dewy eyes down looking grew more beauteous than before. When they neared the silent homestead, up he raised the pitcher light. Like a fitting crown he placed it on her hair of wavelets bright. Emblem of the coming burdens that for love of him she'd bear, calling every burden blessed if his love but lighted there. Then still waving benedictions, further, further off he drew, while his shadow seemed a glory that across the pathway grew. Now about her household duties, silently the maiden went, and an ever-radiant halo o'er her daily life was blent. Little knew the aged matron, as her feet like music fell, what abundant treasures found she, fetching water from the well. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Lady Clare by Alfred Lord Tennyson From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 2, Love, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Lian Yao as the narrator Sonia as Lady Clare Anusha Ayer as Alice the nurse And Craig Franklin as Lord Ronald Lady Clare It was the time when lilies blow And clouds are highest up in air Lord Ronald brought lily white doe to give his cousin, Lady Clare. I trow they do not part in scorn, Lovers long betrothed were they, They too will wed the morrow morn, God's blessing on the day. He does not love me for my birth, Nor for my lands so broad and fair, He loves me for my own true worth, And that is well, said Lady Clare. In there came old Alice, the nurse, Said, Who was this that went from thee? 
it was my cousin said lady clare to-morrow he weds with me oh god be thanked said alice the nurse that all comes round so just and fair lord ronald is heir of all your lands and you are not the lady clare are ye out of your mind my nurse my nurse said lady clare that ye speak so wild as god's above said alice the nurse i speak the truth you are my child the old earl's daughter died at my breast i speak the truth as i live by bread i buried her like my own sweet child and put my child in her stead falsely falsely have ye done o oh mother she said if this be true to keep the best man under the sun so many years from his due nay now my child said alice the nurse but keep the secret for your life and all you have will be lord ronald's when you are man and wife if i'm a beggar born she said i will speak out for i dare not lie pull off pull off the brooch of gold and fling the diamond necklace by nay now my child said alice the nurse but keep the secret all ye can she said not so but i will know if there be any faith in man nay now what faith said alice the nurse the man will cleave unto his right and he shall have it the lady replied though i should die to-night yet give one kiss to your mother dear alas my child i sinned for thee oh mother 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 she said so strange it seems to me yet here's a kiss for my mother dear my mother dear if this be so and lay your hand upon my head and bless me mother ere i go she clad herself in a russet gown she was no longer lady clare she went by dale and she went by down with a single rose in her hair the lily white doe lord ronald had brought leapt up from where she lay dropped her head in the maiden's hand and followed her all the way down stepped lord ronald from his tower o oh, lady clare you shame your worth why come you dressed like a village maid that are the flower of the earth if i come dressed like a village maid i am but as my fortunes are i am a beggar born she said and not the lady clare play me no tricks said lord ronald for i am yours in word and deed play me no tricks said lord ronald your riddle is hard to read oh and proudly stood she up her heart within her did not fail she looked into lord ronald's eyes and told him all her nurse's tale he laughed a laugh of merry scorn he turned and kissed her where she stood if you are not the heiress born and i said he the next in blood if you are not the heiress born and i said he the lawful heir we two will wed to-morrow morn and you shall still be lady clare end of poem this recording is in the public domain curfew must not ring to-night by rose hartwick thorpe from the world's best poetry volume two love part two read for librivox dot org by sonia as the narrator lian yao as bessie thomas peter as the sexton anusha ayer as the judges and the aged sires craig franklin as cromwell and jason in panama as basil underwood curfew must not ring to-night slowly england's sun was setting over the hilltops far away filling all the land with beauty at the close of one sad day and the last rays kissed the forehead of a man and maiden fair he with footsteps slow and weary she with sunny floating hair he with bowed head sad and thoughtful she with lips all cold and white struggling to keep back the murmur curfew must not ring to-night sexton bessie's white lips faltered pointing to the prison old with its turrets tall and gloomy with its walls dark damp and cold i've a lover in that prison doomed this very night to die at the ringing of the curfew 
and no earthly help is nigh. Cromwell will not come till sunset. And her lips grew strangely white as she breathed the husky whisper, Curfew must not ring tonight. Bessie. Calmly spoke the sexton, every word pierced her young heart, like the piercing of an arrow, like a deadly poisoned dart. Long, long years I've rung the curfew from that gloomy shadowed tower. Every evening, just at sunset, it is told the twilight hour. I have done my duty ever, tried to do it just and right. Now I'm old, I will not falter. Curfew, it must ring to-night. Wild her eyes and pale her features, stern and white her thoughtful brow, as within her secret bosom, Bessie made a solemn vow. She had listened while the judges read without a tear or sigh. At the ringing of the curfew, Basil Underwood must die. And her breath came fast and faster, and her eyes grew large and bright. In an undertone she murmured, Curfew must not ring to-night. With quick step she bounded forward, sprung within the old church door, left the old man threading slowly paths so oft he trod before. Not one moment paused the maiden, but with eye and cheek aglow, mounted up the gloomy tower, where the bell swung to and fro. As she climbed the dusty ladder, on which fell no ray of light, up and up, her white lips saying, Curfew must not ring to-night. She has reached the topmost ladder, over her hangs the great dark bell. Awful is the gloom beneath her, like the pathway down to hell. Lo, the ponderous tongue is swinging, tis the hour of curfew now, and the sight has chilled her bosom, stopped her breath, and paled her brow. Shall she let it ring? No, never. Flash her eyes with sudden light, as she springs and grasps it firmly. Curfew you shall not ring to-night! Out she swung, far out, the city seemed a speck of light below, there twixt heaven and earth suspended as the bell swung to and fro, and the sexton at the bell-rope, old and deaf, heard not the bell, sadly thought. That twilight curfew rang young Basil's funeral knell. Still the maiden clung more firmly, and with trembling lips so white, said to hush her heart's wild throbbing, Curfew shall not ring to-night. It was over, the bell ceased swaying, and the maiden stepped once more, firmly on the dark old ladder, where for hundred years before human foot had not been planted. The brave deed that she had done should be told long ages after, as the rays of setting sun crimson all the sky with beauty aged sires with heads of white tell the eager listening children curfew did not ring that night over the distant hills came cromwell bessie sees him and her brow lately white with fear and anguish has no anxious traces now at his feet she tells her story shows her hands all bruised and torn and her face so sweet and pleading, yet with sorrow, pale and worn, touched his heart with sudden pity, lit his eyes with misty light. Go, your lover lives, said Cromwell. Curfew shall not ring to-night. Wide they flung the massive portal, led the prisoner forth to die, all his bright young life before him. Neath the darkening English sky, Bessie comes with flying footsteps, eyes aglow with love light sweet kneeling on the turf beside him lays his pardon at his feet in his brave strong arms he clasped her kissed the face upturned and white whispered darling you have saved me curfew will not ring to-night end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Sleeping Beauty, from the Daydream, by Alfred, Lord Tennyson, from the World's Best Poetry, Volume 2, Love, Part 2, read for LibriVox.org, by Thomas Peter as the narrator, Jason in Panama as the prince, Craig Franklin as the king, and Lian Yao as the princess. 
the sleeping beauty from the daydream year after year unto her feet she lying on her couch alone across the purple coverlet the maiden's jet black hair has grown on either side her tranced form forth streaming from a braid of pearl the slumberous light is rich and warm and moves not on the rounded curl the silk star broidered coverlid unto her limbs itself doth mould languidly ever and amid her full black ringlets downward rolled glows forth each softly shadowed arm with bracelets of the diamond bright her constant beauty doth inform stillness with love and day with light she sleeps her breathings are not heard in palace chambers far apart the fragrant tresses are not stirred that lie upon her charmed heart she sleeps on either hand upswells the gold fringed pillow lightly pressed she sleeps nor dreams but ever dwells a perfect form in perfect rest the arrival all precious things discovered late to those that seek them issue forth for love and sequel works with fate and draws the veil from hidden worth he travels far from other skies his mantle glitters on the rocks a fairy prince with joyful eyes and lighter footed than the fox the bodies and the bones of those that strove in other days to pass are withered in the thorny close or scattered blanching in the grass he gazes on the silent dead they perished in their daring deeds this proverb flashes through his head the many fail the one succeeds he comes scarce knowing what he seeks he breaks the hedge he enters there the colour flies into his cheeks he trusts to light on something fair for all his life the charm did talk about his path and hover near with words of promise in his walk and whispered voices in his ear more close and close his footsteps wind the magic music in his heart beats quick and quicker till he find the quiet chamber far apart his spirit flutters like a lark he stoops to kiss her on his knee love if thy tresses be so dark how dark those hidden eyes must be the revival a touch a kiss the charm was snapped there rose a noise of striking clocks and feet that ran and doors that clapped and barking dogs and crowing cocks a fuller light illumined all a breeze through all the garden swept a sudden hubbub shook the hall and sixty feet the fountain leapt the hedge broke in the banner blew the butler drank the steward scrawled the fire shot up the martin flew the parrot screamed the peacock squalled the maid and page renewed their strife the palace banged and buzzed and clacked and all the long pent stream of life dashed downward in a cataract at last with these the king awoke and in his chair himself appeared and yawned and rubbed his face and spoke by holy rood a royal beard how say you we have slept my lords my beard has grown into my lap the barons swore with many words twas but an after-dinner's nap pardy returned the king but still my joints are something stiff or so my lord and shall we pass the bill i mentioned half an hour ago the chancellor sedate and vain in courteous words returned reply but dallied with his golden chain and smiling put the question by the departure and on her lover's arm she leant and round her waist she felt it fold and far across the hills they went in that new world which is the old across the hills and far away beyond their utmost purple rim and deep into the dying day the happy princess followed him I'd sleep another hundred years, oh love, for such another kiss. Awake oh, forever, love, she hears. Oh love, twas such as this and this. 
and o'er the many a sliding star and many a merry wind was born and streamed through many a golden bar the twilight melted into morn o oh, eyes long laid in happy sleep o oh, happy sleep that lightly fled o oh, happy kiss that woke thy sleep o oh, love thy kiss would wake the dead and o'er the many a flowing range of vapour buoyed the crescent bark and wrapped through many a rosy change the twilight died into the dark a hundred summers can it be and whither goest thou tell me where o oh, seek my father's court with me for there are greater wonders there and o'er the hills and far away beyond their utmost purple rim beyond the night across the day through all the world she followed him end of poem this recording is in the public domain the eve of saint agnes by john keats from the world's best poetry volume two love part two read for librivox dot org by sonia as the narrator anusha ayer as old angela thomas peter as porphyro and lian yao as madeline the eve of saint agnes st agnes eve how bitter chill it was the owl for all his feathers was a cold the hare limbed trembling through the frozen grass and silent was the flock in woolly fold numb were the beadsman's fingers while he told his rosary and while his frosted breath like pious incense from a censer old seemed taking flight for heaven without a death past the sweet virgin's picture while his prayer he saith his prayer he saith this patient holy man then takes his lamp and rises from his knees and back returneth meagre barefoot wan along the chapel aisle by slow degrees the sculptured dead on each side seem to freeze imprisoned in black purgatorial rails knights ladies praying in dumb oratories he passes by and his weak spirit fails to think how they may ache in icy hoods and mails northward he turneth through a little door and scarce three steps ere music's golden tongue flatter to tears this aged man and poor but no already had his death-bell rung the joys of all his life were sad and sung his was harsh penance on saint agnes eve another way he went and soon among rough ashes sat he for his soul's reprieve and all night kept awake for sinner's sake to grieve that ancient beadsman heard the prelude soft and so it chanced for many a door was wide from hurry to and fro soon up aloft the silver snarling trumpets gan to chide the level chambers ready with their pride were glowing to receive a thousand guests the carved angels ever eager-eyed stared where upon their heads the cornice rests with hair blown back and wings put crosswise on their breasts at length burst in the argent revelry with plume tiara and all rich array numerous as shadows haunting fairily the brain new stuffed in youth with triumphs gay of old romance these let us wish away and turn so thought it to one lady there whose heart had brooded all that wintry day on love and winged st agnes saintly care as she had heard all dames full many times declare they told her how upon st agnes eve young virgins might have visions of delight and soft adorings from their loves receive upon the honeyed middle of the night if ceremonies due they did aright as supperless to bed they must retire and couch supine their beauties lily white nor look behind nor sideways but require of heaven with upward eyes for all that they desire full of this whim the thoughtful madeline the music yearning like a god in pain she scarcely heard her maiden eyes divine fixed on the floor saw many a sweeping train pass by she heeded not at all in vain came many a tiptoe amorous cavalier and back retired not cooled by high disdain but she saw not 
her heart was otherwhere she sighed for agnes dreams the sweetest of the year she danced along with vague regardless eyes anxious her lips her breathing quick and short the hallowed hour was near at hand she sighs amid the timbrels and the thronged resort of whispers in anger or in sport mid looks of love defiance hate and scorn hoodwinked with fairy fancy all a mort save to st agnes and her lamps unshorn and all the bliss to be before to-morrow morn so purposing each moment to retire she lingered still meantime across the moors had come young porphyro with heart on fire for madeline beside the portal doors buttressed from moonlight stands he and implores all saints to give him sight of madeline but for one moment in the tedious hours that he might gaze and worship all unseen perchance speak kneel touch kiss in sooth such things have been he ventures in let no buzzed whisper tell all eyes be muffled or a hundred swords will storm his heart love's feverous citadel for him those chambers held barbarian hordes hyena foemen and hot-blooded lords whose very dogs would execrations howl against his lineage not one breast affords him any mercy in that mansion foul save one old beldame weak in body and in soul ah happy chance the aged creature came shuffling along with ivory-headed wand to where he stood hid from the torch's flame behind a broad hall pillar far beyond the sound of merriment and chorus bland he startled her but soon she knew his face and grasped his fingers in her palsied hand saying mercy porphyro hie thee from this place they are all here to-night the whole bloodthirsty race get hence get hence there's dwarfish hildebrand he had a fever late and in the fit he cursed thee and thine both house and land then there's that old lord maurice not a whit more tame for his grey hairs alas me flit flit like a ghost away ah gossip dear we're safe enough here in this armchair sit and tell me how good saints not here not here follow me child or else these stones will be thy bier he followed through a lowly arched way brushing the cobwebs with his lofty plume and as she muttered well uh, well a day he found him in a little moonlight room pale latticed chill and silent as a tomb now tell me where is madeline said he oh tell me angela by the holy loom which none but secret sisterhood may see when they saint agnes wool are weaving piously saint agnes ah it is saint agnes's eve yet men will murder upon holy days thou must hold water in a witch's sieve and be liege lord of all the elves and fays to venture so it fills me with amaze to see thee poor Fyro. saint agnes's eve god's help my lady fair the conjurer plays this very night good angels her deceive but let me laugh a while i've mickle time to grieve feebly she laugheth in the languid moon while porphyro upon her face doth look like puzzled urchin on an aged crone who keepeth closed a wondrous riddle book as spectacled she sits in chimney nook but soon his eyes grew brilliant when she told his lady's purpose and he scarce could brook tears at the thought of those enchantments cold and madeline asleep in lap of legends old sudden a thought came like a full-blown rose flushing his brow and in his pained heart made purple riot then doth he propose a stratagem that makes the beldame start a cruel man and impious thou art sweet lady let her pray and sleep and dream alone with her good angels far apart from wicked men like thee go go i deem thou canst not surely be the same that thou didst seem i will not harm her by all saints i swear quoth porphyro oh may i ne'er find grace when my weak voice shall whisper its last prayer if one of her soft ringlets i displace 
or look with ruffian passion in her face good angela believe me by these tears or i will even in a moment's space awake with horrid shout my foeman's ears and beard them though they be more fanged than wolves and bears ah why wilt thou affright a feeble soul a poor weak palsy-stricken churchyard thing whose passing bell may ear the midnight toll whose prayers for thee each morn and evening were never missed thus plaining doth she bring a gentle speech from burning porphyro so woeful and of such deep sorrowing that angela gives promise she will do whatever he shall wish betide her weal or woe which was to lead him in close secrecy even to madeline's chamber and there hide him in a closet of such privacy that he might see her beauty unespied and win perhaps that night a peerless bride while legent fairies paced her coverlet and pale enchantment held her sleepy-eyed never on such a night have lovers met since merlin paid his demon all the monstrous debt it shall be as thou wishest said the dame all gates and dainties shall be stored there quickly on this feast night by the timbre frame her own loot thou wilt see no time to spare for i am slow and feeble and scarce dare on such a catering trust my dizzy head wait here my child with patience kneel in prayer the while ah thou must needs the lady wed or may i never leave my grave among the dead so saying she hobbled off with busy fear the lover's endless minutes slowly passed the dame returned and whispered in his ear to follow her with aged eyes aghast from fright of dim espial safe at last through many a dusky gallery they gain the maiden's chamber silken hushed and chaste where porphyro took covert pleased amain his poor guide hurried back with agues in her brain her faltering hand upon the balustrade old angela was feeling for the stair when madeline st agnes charmed maid rose like a missioned spirit unaware with silver tapers light and pious care she turned and down the aged gossip led to a safe level matting now prepare young porphyro for gazing on that bed she comes she comes again like ringdove frayed and fled out went the taper as she hurried in its little smoke in pallid moonshine died she closed the door she panted all akin to spirits of the air and visions wide no uttered syllable or woe betide but to her heart her heart was voluble paining with eloquence her balmy side as though a tongueless nightingale should swell her throat in vain and die heart stifled in her dell a casement high and triple arch there was all garlanded with carven imageries of fruits and flowers and bunches of knotgrass and diamonded with panes of quaint device innumerable of stains and splendid dyes as are the tiger moss deep damask wings and in the midst mong thousand heraldries and twilight saints and dim emblazonings a shielded scutcheon blushed with blood of queens and kings full on this casement shone the wintry moon and threw warm gules on madeline's fair breast as down she knelt for heaven's grace and boon rose bloom fell on her hands together pressed and on her silver cross soft amethyst and on her hair a glory like a saint she seemed a splendid angel newly dressed save wings for heaven porphyro grew faint she knelt so pure a thing so free from mortal taint anon his heart revives her vespers done of all its wreathed pearls her hair she frees unclasps her warm jewels one by one loosens her fragrant bodies by degrees her rich attire creeps rustling to her knees half hidden like a mermaid in seaweed pensive a while she dreams awake and sees in fancy fair st agnes in her bed but dares not look behind or all the charm is fled 
soon trembling in her soft and chilly nest in sort of wakeful swoon perplexed she lay until the poppied warmth of sleep oppressed her soothed limbs and soul fatigued away flown like a thought until the morrow day blissfully havened both from joy and pain clasped like a missile where swart pain hymns pray blinded alike from sunshine and from rain as though a rose should shut and be a bud again stolen to this paradise and so entranced porphyro gazed upon her empty dress and listened to her breathing if it chanced to wake into a slumberous tenderness which when he heard that minute did he bless and breathed himself then from the closet crept noiseless as fear in a wide wilderness and over the hushed carpet silent stepped and tween the curtains peeped where lo how fast she slept then by the bedside where the faded moon made a dim silver twilight soft he set a table and half anguished threw thereon a cloth of woven crimson gold and jet oh for some drowsy morphian amulet the boisterous midnight festival clarion the kettle drum and far heard clarionet affray his ears though but in dying tone the hall door shuts again and all the noise is gone and still she slept an azure lidded sleep in blanched linen smooth and lavendered while he from forth the closet brought a heap of candied apple quince and plum and gourd with jellies soother than the creamy curd and loosened syrups tinct with cinnamon manna and dates in argosy transferred from fez and spice dainties every one from silken samarch and to cedar lebanon these delicates he heaped with glowing hand on golden dishes and in baskets bright of wreathed silver sumptuous they stand in the retired quiet of the night filling the chilly room with perfume light and now my love my seraph fair awake thou art my heaven and i thine eremite open thine eyes for meek saint agnes sake or i shall drowse beside thee so my soul doth ache thus whispering his warm unnerved arm sank in her pillow shaded was her dream by the dusk curtains twas a midnight charm impossible to melt as iced stream the lustrous salvers in the moonlight gleam broad golden fringe upon the carpet lies it seemed he never never could redeem from such a steadfast spell his lady's eyes so mused a while and toiled in roofed fantasies awakening up he took her hollow lute tumultuous and in chords that tenderest be he played an ancient ditty long since mute in provence called la belle dame sans merci close to her ear touching the melody wherewith disturbed she uttered a soft moan he ceased she panted quick and suddenly her blue afraid eyes wide open shone upon his knees he sank pale as smooth sculptured stone her eyes were open but still she beheld now wide awake the vision of her sleep there was a painful change that nigh expelled the blisses of her dream so pure and deep at which fair madeline began to weep and moan forth witless words with many a sigh while still her gaze on porphyro would keep who knelt with joined hands and piteous eye fearing to move or speak she looked so dreamingly ah oh, porphyro said she but even now thy voice was that sweet tremble in mine ear made tunable with every sweetest vow and those sad eyes are spiritual and clear how changed thou art how pallid chill and drear give me that voice again my poor Fyro. those looks immortal those complainings dear oh leave me not in this eternal woe for if thou diest my love i know not where to go beyond the mortal man impassioned far at these voluptuous accents he arose ethereal flushed and like a throbbing star seen mid the sapphire heaven's deep repose into her dream he melted as the rose blendeth its odour with the violet solution sweet meantime the frost wind blows like love's alarum 
pattering the sharp sleet against the window panes st agnes moon hath set tis dark quick pattereth the floor-blown sleet this is no dream my bride my madeline tis dark the iced gust still rave and beat no dream alas alas and woe is mine for Vira will leave me here to fade and pine cruel what traitor could thee hither bring i curse not for my heart lost in thine though thou forsakest a deceived thing a dove forlorn and lost with sick unpruned wing my madeline sweet dreamer lovely bride say may i be for i thy vassal blest thy beauty shield heart-shaped and vermeil dyed ah silver shrine here will i take my rest after so many hours of toil and quest a famished pilgrim saved by miracle though i have found i will not rob thy nest saving of thy sweet self if thou think'st well to trust fair madeline to no rude infidel hark tis an elfin storm from fairyland of haggard seeming but a boon indeed arise arise the morning is at hand the bloated wassailers will never heed let us away my love with happy speed there are no ears to hear or eyes to see drowned all in rhenish in the sleepy mead awake arise my love and fearless be for all the southern moors i have a home for thee she hurried at his words beset with fears for there were sleeping dragons all around at glaring watch perhaps with ready spears down the wide stairs a darkling way they found in all the house was heard no human sound a chain drooped lamp was flickering by each door the arras rich with horsemen hawk and hound fluttered in the besieging wind's uproar and the long carpets rose along the gusty floor they glide like phantoms into the wide hall like phantoms to the iron porch they glide where lay the porter in uneasy sprawl with a huge empty flagon by his side the wakeful bloodhound rose and shook his hide but his sagacious eye an inmate owns by one and one the bolts full easy slide the chains lie silent on the foot-worn stones the key turns and the door upon its hinges groans and they are gone ay ages long ago these lovers fled away into the storm that night the baron dreamt of many a woe and all his warrior guests with shade and form of witch and demon and large coffin worm were long be nightmared angela the old died palsy twitched with meagre face deform the beadsman after thousand aves told foray unsought for slept among his ashes cold end of poem this recording is in the public domain so sweet love seemed by robert seymour bridges from the world's best poetry volume two love part two read for LibriVox.org by thomas peter so sweet love seemed so sweet love seemed that april morn when first we kissed beside the thorn so strangely sweet it was not strange we thought that love could never change but i can tell let truth be told that love will change in growing old though day by day is not to see so delicate his motions be and in the end will come to pass quite to forget what once he was nor even in fancy to recall the pleasure that was all in all his little spring that sweet we found so deep in summer floods is drowned i wander bathed in joy complete how love so young could be so sweet end of poem this recording is in the public domain
Echoes by Thomas More from the World's Best Poetry, Volume Two, Love, Part Two, read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. Echoes. How sweet the answer echo makes to music at night, when roused by lute or horn she wakes, and far away over lawns and lakes goes answering light. Yet love hath echoes truer far and far more sweet than ever beneath the moonlight star of horn or lute or soft guitar the songs repeat tis when the sigh in youth sincere and only then the sigh that's breathed for one to hear is by that one that only dear breathed back again end of poem this recording is in the public domain Love's Young Dream from Irish Melodies by Thomas Moore From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 2, Love, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Anusha Ayer Love's Young Dream from Irish Melodies Oh, the days are gone when beauty bright my heart's chain wove When my dream of life from morn till night was love, still love New hope may bloom, and days may come, Of milder, calmer beam. But there's nothing half so sweet in life As love's young dream. Oh, there's nothing half so sweet in life As love's young dream. Though the bard to purer fame may soar When wild youth's past, Though he win the wise who frowned before To smile at last, He'll never meet a joy so sweet in all his noon of fame as when first he sung to woman's ear his soul felt flame, and at every close she blushed to hear the one loved name. Oh, that hallowed form is ne'er forget, which first love traced, still it lingering haunts the greenest spot on memory's waste. Twas odor fled as soon as shed, twas morning's winged dream. Twas a light that ne'er can shine again on life's dull stream. Oh, twas a light that ne'er can shine again on life's dull stream. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Might of One Fair Face by Michelangelo Translated from the Italian by J. E. Taylor From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 2, Love, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama The Might of One Fair Face The might of one fair face sublimes my love, For it hath weaned my heart from low desires nor death I heed, nor purgatorial fires. Thy beauty, antipast of joys above, instructs me in the bliss that saints approve. For, oh, how good, how beautiful must be the God that made so good a thing as thee, so fair an image of the heavenly dove. Forgive me if I cannot turn away from those sweet eyes that are my earthly heaven for they are guiding stars, benignly given to tempt my footsteps to the upward way, and if I dwell too fondly in thy sight, I live and love in God's peculiar light. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. My true love hath my heart by Sir Philip Sidney from the world's best poetry volume two love part two read for librivox.org by lian yao my true love hath my heart my true love hath my heart and i have his by just exchange one to the other given i hold his dear and mine he cannot miss there never was a better bargain driven my true love hath my heart, and I have his. 
His heart in me keeps him and me in one. My heart in him his thoughts and senses guides. He loves my heart, for once it was his own. I cherish his because in me it bides. My true love hath my heart, and I have his. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Were I as base as is the lowly plain? By Joshua Sylvester From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 2, Love, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Craig Franklin Were I as base as is the lowly plain? Were I as base as is the lowly plain, And you, my love, as high as heaven above, Yet should the thoughts of me your humble swain Ascend to heaven in honour of my love. Were I as high as heaven above the plain, And you, my love, as humble and as low, As are the deepest bottoms of the main, Wheresoe'er you were, with you my love should go. Were you the earth, dear love, and I the skies, My love should shine on you like to the sun, And look upon you with ten thousand eyes, Till heaven waxed blind, and till the world was done. Wheresoe'er I am, below, or else above you, Wheresoe'er you are, my heart shall truly love you. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. When Stars Are in the Quiet Skies by Edward Lord Lytton From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 2, Love, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia When Stars Are in the Quiet Skies When stars are in the quiet skies, Then most I pine for thee. Bend on me then thy tender eyes, As stars look on the sea. For thoughts, like waves that glide by night, Are stillest when they shine. Mine earthly love lies hushed in light Beneath the heaven of thine. There is an hour when angels keep Familiar watch over men, When coarser souls are wrapped in sleep, Sweet spirit, meet me then. There is an hour when holy dreams Through slumber fairest glide, And in that mystic hour it seems Thou shouldst be by my side. My thoughts of thee too sacred are for daylight's common beam i can but know thee as my star my angel and my dream when stars are in the quiet skies then most i pine for thee bend on me then thy tender eyes as stars look on the sea end of poem this recording is in the public domain Come Rest in This Bosom From Irish Melodies By Thomas Moore From The World's Best Poetry Volume 2 Love, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org By Lian Yao Come Rest in This Bosom Come, rest in this bosom, my own stricken dear. Though the herd have fled from thee, thy home is still here. Here still is a smile that no cloud can e'er cast, And a heart and a hand all thy own to the last. Oh, what was love made for, if tis not the same, Through joy and through torment, through glory and shame? I know not, I ask not, if guilt's in that heart, I but know that I love thee, whatever thou art. Thou hast called me thy angel in moments of bliss, And thy angel I'll be, mid the horrors of this, through the furnace, unshrinking, thy steps to pursue, And shield thee, and save thee, or perish there too. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Gilly Flower of Gold by William Morris From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 2 Love, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter The Gilly Flower of Gold 
a golden gillyflower today i wore upon my helm all way and won the prize of this tournay ha ha la belle jean giroflé however well sir giles might sit his son was weak to wither it lord miles's blood was due on it ha ha la belle jean giroflé although my spear in splinters flew from john's steel coat my eye was true i wheeled about and cried for you ha ha la belle jean giroflé yea do not doubt my heart was good though my sword flew like rotten wood to shout although i scarcely stood ha ha la belle jean giroflé my hand was steady too to take my axe from round my neck and break john's steel coat up for my love's sake ha ha la belle jean giroflé when i stood in my tent again arming afresh i felt a pain take hold of me i was so fain ha ha la belle jean giroflé to hear en air au fil des preux right in my ears again and show the gillyflower blossomed new ha ha la belle jean giroflé the sir guillaume against me came his tabard bore three points of flame with little blame ha ha la belle jean giroflé our tough spears crackled up like straw he was the first to turn and draw his sword that had no speck nor flaw ha ha la belle jean giroflé but i felt weaker than a maid and my brain dizzied and afraid within my helm a fierce tune played ha ha la belle jean giroflé until i thought of your dear head bowed to the gillyflower bed the yellow flowers stained with red ha ha la belle jean giroflé crash how the swords met giroflé the fierce tune in my helm would play la belle belle jean giroflé ha ha la belle jean giroflé once more the great swords met again la belle la belle but who fell then le sir guillaume who struck down ten ha ha la belle jean giroflé and as with mazed and unarmed face toward my own crown and the queen's place they led me at a gentle pace ha ha la belle jean giroflé I almost saw your quiet head bowed o'er the gillyflower bed, the yellow flower stained with red. Ha ha, la belle Jean Giroflé. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Landlady's Daughter by Ludwig Olhand, translated from the German by J. S. Dwight, from the World's Best Poetry, Volume 2, Love, Part 2, read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama as the narrator, Thomas Peter as the first student, Sonia as the landlady, Lian Yao as the second student, and Craig Franklin as the third student. The Landlady's Daughter three students were travelling over the rhine they stopped when they came to the landlady's sign good landlady have you good beer and wine and where is that dear little daughter of thine my beer and wine are fresh and clear my daughter she lies on the cold death beer and when to the chamber they made their way there dead in the coal-black shrine she lay the first he drew near and the veil gently raised and on her pale face he mournfully gazed ah oh, wert thou but living yet he said i'd love thee from this time forth fair maid the second he slowly put back the shroud and turned him away and wept aloud ah oh, that thou liest in the cold death beer alas i have loved thee for many a year the third he once more uplifted the veil and kissed her upon her mouth so pale 
thee loved i always i love still but thee and thee will i love through eternity end of poem this recording is in the public domain believe me if all those endearing young charms by thomas moore from the world's best poetry volume two love part two read for librivox dot org by sonia believe me if all those endearing young charms believe me if all those endearing young charms which i gaze on so fondly to-day were to change by to-morrow and fleet in my arms like fairy gifts fading away thou wouldst still be adored as this moment thou art let thy loveliness fade as it will and around the dear ruin each wish of my heart would entwine itself verdantly still it is not while beauty and youth are thine own and thy cheeks unprofaned by a tear that the fervour and faith of a soul may be known to which time will but make thee more dear no the heart that has truly loved never forgets but as truly loves on to the close as the sunflower turns to her god when he sets the same look which she turned when he rose end of poem this recording is in the public domain forget thee by john moultrie from the world's best poetry volume two love part two read for librivox dot org by craig franklin forget thee forget thee if to dream by night and muse on thee by day if all the worship deep and wild a poet's heart can pay if prayers in absence breathe to thee to heaven's protecting power if winged thoughts that flit to thee a thousand in an hour if busy fancy blending thee with all my future lot if this thou course forgetting thou indeed shalt be forgot forget thee bid the forest birds forget their sweetest tune forget thee bid the sea forget to swell beneath the moon bid the thirsty flowers forget to drink the ease refreshing dew thyself forget thine own dear land and its mountains wild and blue forget each old familiar face each long remembered spot when these things are forgot by thee then thou shalt be forgot keep if thou wilt thy maiden peace still calm and fancy free for god forbid thy gladsome heart should grow less glad for me yet while that heart is still unwon o oh, bid not mine to rove but let it nurse its humble faith and uncomplaining love if these preserved for patient years at last avail me not forget me then but ne'er believe that thou canst be forgot end of poem this recording is in the public domain Renouncement by Alice Maynell from the World's Best Poetry, Volume Two, Love, Part Two, read for LibriVox.org by Anusha Ayer. Renouncement. I must not think of thee, and tired yet strong, I shun the thought that lurks in all delight, the thought of thee, and in the blue heaven's height, and in the sweetest passage of a song oh just beyond the fairest thoughts that throng this breast the thought of thee waits hidden yet bright but it must never never come in sight i must stop short of thee the whole day long but when sleep comes to close each difficult day when night gives pause to the long watch i keep and all my bonds i needs must loose apart must doff my will as raiment laid away with the first dream that comes with the first sleep i run i run i am gathered to thy heart end of poem this recording is in the public domain
Love by Robert Browning from the World's Best Poetry, Volume Two, Love, Part Two, read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama. Love, such a starved bank of moss till that May morn, blue ran the flash across. Violets were born. Sky, what a scowl of cloud till near and far, ray on ray split the shroud splendid a star world how it walled about life with disgrace till god's own smile came out that was thy face end of poem this recording is in the public domain last night by christian winther translated from swedish by theophila Matsyas, from the world's best poetry volume two love part two read for LibriVox.org by lian yao last night last night the nightingale waked me last night when all was still it sang in the golden moonlight from out the woodland hill i opened the window gently and all was dreamy too and oh the bird my darling was singing singing of you of you i think of you in the daytime i dream of you by night i wake would you were near me and heart tis blind my sight i hear a sigh in the lime tree the wind is floating through and oh the night my darling is longing longing for you for you nor think i can forget you i could not though i would i see you in all around me the stream the night the wood the flowers that sleep so gently the stars above the blue oh heaven itself my darling is praying praying for you for you end of poem this recording is in the public domain minstrel's marriage song from oela a tragical interlude by thomas chatterton from the world's best poetry volume two love part two read for librivox dot org by jason in panama as the first minstrel and anusha ayer as the second minstrel minstrel's marriage song from oella a tragical interlude first minstrel the budding floweret blushes at the light the meads are sprinkled with the yellow hue in daisied mantles is the mountain dight the slim young cowslip bendeth with the dew the trees and leafed into heaven strot when gentle winds do blow to whistling din are brought the evening comes and brings the dew along the ruddy welkin sheeneth to the eyne around the ale stake minstrels sing the song young ivy round the doorpost doth entwine i lay me on the grass yet to my will albeit all is fair there lacketh something still second minstrel so adam thought what time in paradise all heaven and earth did homage to his mind in woman and none else man's pleasance lies as instruments of joy are kind with kind go take a wife unto thine arms and see winter and dusky hills will have a charm for thee end of poem this recording is in the public domain
Summer Days by Wathen Marks Wilkes Call from The World's Best Poetry, Volume 2, Love, Part 2, read for LibriVox.org by Lian Yao. Summer Days In summer, when the days were long, we walked together in the wood. Our heart was light, our steps were strong, sweet flutterings were there in our blood. In summer, when the days were long. We strayed from morn till evening came, we gathered flowers and wove us crowns, we walked mid poppies red as flame, or sat upon the yellow downs, and always wished our life the same. In summer, when the days were long, we leapt the hedgerow, crossed the brook, and still her voice flowed forth in song, or else she read some graceful book, in summer, when the days were long. And then we sat beneath the trees, with shadows lessening in the noon, and in the sunlight and the breeze we feasted many a gorgeous June, while larks were singing o'er the leas. In summer, when the days were long, on dainty chicken, snow-white bread, we feasted with no grace but song. We plucked wild strawberries, ripe and red, in summer, when the days were long. We loved and yet we knew it not for loving seemed like breathing then we found a heaven in every spot saw angels too in all good men and dreamed of god in grove and grot in summer when the days are long alone i wander muse alone i see her not but that old song under the fragrant wind is blown in summer when the days are long Alone I wander in the wood, but one fair spirit hears my sighs, and half I see, so glad and good, the honest daylight of her eyes, that charmed me under earlier skies. In summer, when the days are long, I love her as we loved of old. My heart is light, my step is strong, for love brings back those hours of gold, in summer, when the days are long. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Fly to the desert, fly with me. Song of Normahal in The Light of the Harim by Thomas Moore. From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 2. Love, Part 2. Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter as the narrator. Anusha Ayer as Noor Mahal and craig franklin as selim fly to the desert fly with me song of normahal in the light of the harim fly to the desert fly with me our arab tents are rude for thee but oh the choice what heart can doubt of tents with love or thrones without our rocks are rough but smiling there the acacia waves her yellow hair lonely and sweet nor loved the less for flowering in the wilderness our sands are bare but down their slope the silvery footed antelope as gracefully and gaily springs as o'er the marble courts of kings then come thy arab maid will be the loved and lone acacia tree the antelope whose feet shall bless with their light sound thy loneliness oh there are looks and tones that dart an instant sunshine through the heart as if the soul that minute caught some treasure it through life had sought as if the very lips and eyes predestined to have all our sighs and never be forgot again sparkled and spoke before as then so came thy every glance and tone when first on me they breathed and shone new as if brought from other spheres yet welcome as if loved for years then fly with me if thou hast known no other flame nor falsely thrown a gem away that thou hadst sworn should ever in thy heart be worn come if the love thou hast for me is pure and fresh as mine for thee fresh as the fountain underground when first it is by the lapwing found 
but if for me thou dost forsake some other maid and rudely break her worshipped image from its base to give to me the ruined place then fare thee well i'd rather make my bower upon some icy lake when thawing suns begin to shine than trust to love so false as thine there was a pathos in this lay that even without enchantment's art would instantly have found its way deep into selim's burning heart but breathing as it did a tone to earthly lutes and lips unknown with every chord fresh from the touch of music's spirit twas too much starting he dashed away the cup which all the time of this sweet air his hand had held untasted up as if twere fixed by magic there and naming her so long unnamed so long unseen wildly exclaimed o normahal o normahal hadst thou but sung this witching strain i could forget forgive thee all and never leave those eyes again the mask is off the charm is wrought and selim to his heart has caught in blushes more than ever bright his normahal his harim's light and well do vanished frowns enhance the charm of every brightened glance and dear seems each dawning smile for having lost its light awhile and happier now for all her sighs as on his arm her head reposes she whispers him with laughing eyes remember love the feast of roses end of poem this recording is in the public domain In a Gondola by Robert Browning From The World's Best Poetry, Volume 2, Love, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Lian Yao as the narrator Jason in Panama as the man And Sonia as the woman In a Gondola He sings I send my heart up to thee All my heart in this my singing for the stars help me and the sea bears part the very night is clinging closer to venice's streets to leave one space above me whence thy face may light my joyous heart to thee its dwelling place she speaks say after me and try to say my very words as if each word came from you of your own accord in your own voice in your own way this woman's heart and soul and brain are mine as much as this gold chain she bids me wear which say again i choose to make by cherishing a precious thing or choose to fling over the boatside ring by ring and yet once more say no word more since words are only words give o'er unless you call me all the same familiarly by my pet name which if the three should hear you call and me reply to would proclaim at once our secret to them all ask of me too command me blame do break down the partition wall twixt us the daylight world beholds curtained in dusk and splendid folds what's left but all of me to take i am the threes prevent them slake your thirst tis said the arab sage in practising with gems can lose their subtle spirit in his cruise and leave but ashes so sweet mage leave them my ashes when thy use sucks out my soul thy heritage he sings past we glide and past and past what's that poor agnese doing where they make the shutters fast Grays and obies just a wooing to his couch the purchased bride past we glide past we glide and past and past why is the poochy palace flaring like a beacon to the blast guests by hundred not one caring if the dear host next were ride past we glide she sings the moth kiss first kiss me as if you made believe you were not sure this eve how my face 
your flower had pursed its petals up so here and there you brush it till i grow aware who wants me and why do i burst the bees kiss now kiss me as if you entered gay my heart at some noonday a bud that dares not disallow the claim so all is rendered up and passively its shattered cup over your head to sleep i bow he sings what are we to i am a jew and carry thee farther than friends can pursue to a feast of our tribe where they need thee to bribe the devil that blasts them unless he imbibe thy scatter the vision forever and now as of old i am i thou art thou say again what we are the sprite of a star i lure thee above where the destinies bar my plumes their full play till a ruddier ray then my pale one announced there is withering away some scatter the vision forever and now as of old i am i thou art thou he muses oh which were best to roam or rest the land's lap or the water's breast to sleep on yellow millet sheaves or swim in lucid shallows just eluding water lily leaves an inch from death's black fingers thrust to lock you whom release he must which life were best on summer eves he speaks musing lie back could thought of mine improve you from this shoulder let there spring a wing from this another wing wings not legs and feet shall move you snow white must they spring to blend with your flesh but i intend they shall deepen to the end broader into burning gold till both wings crescent wise enfold your perfect self from neath your feet to o'er your head where lo they meet as if a million sword blades hurled defiance from you to the world rescue me thou the only real and scare away this mad ideal that came nor motions to depart thanks now stay ever as thou art still he muses what if the three should catch at last thy serenader while there's cast paul's cloak about my head and fast jan pinions me himself has passed his stylet through my back i reel and is it thou i feel they trail me these three godless knaves past every church that saints and saves nor stop till where the cold sea raves by lido's wet accursed graves they scoop mine roll me to its brink and on thy breast i sink she replies musing dip your arm over the boat side elbow deep as i do thus were death so unlike sleep caught this way death to fear from flame or steel or poison doubtless but from water feel go find the bottom would you stay me there now pluck a great blade of that ribbon grass to plate in where the foolish jewel was i flung away since you have praised my hair tis proper to be choice in what i wear he speaks row home must we row home too surely know i where its fronts demurely over the judeca piled window just with window mating door on door exactly waiting all's the set face of a child but behind it wears a trace of the steadness and reserve and formal lines without a curve in the same child's playing face no two windows look one way o'er the small sea-water thread below them ah the autumn day i passing saw you overhead first out a cloud of curtain blue then a sweet cry and last came you to catch your lorry that must needs escape just then of all times then to peck a tall plant's fleecy seeds and make me happiest of men i scarce could breathe to see you reach so far back o'er the balcony to catch him ere he climbed too high above you in the smyrna peach that quick the round smooth cord of gold this coiled hair on your head unrolled 
fell down you like a gorgeous snake the roman girls were wont of old when rome there was for coolness sake to let lie curling o'er their bosoms dear lory may his beak retain ever its delicate rose stain as if the wounded lotus blossoms had marked their thief to know again stay longer yet for others sake than mine what should your chamber do with all its rarities that ache in silence while day lasts but wake at night-time and their life renew suspended just to pleasure you who brought against their will together these objects and while day lasts weave around them such a magic tether that dumb they look your harp believe with all the sensitive tight strings which dare not speak now to itself breathes slumberlessly as if some elf went in and out the chords his wings make murmur wheresoe'er they graze as an angel may between the maze of midnight palace pillars on and on to sow god's plagues have gone through guilty glorious babylon and while such murmurs flow the nymph bends o'er the harp top from her shell as the dry limpet for the nymph come with a tune he knows so well and how your statues hearts must swell and how your pictures must descend to see each other friend with friend oh could you take them by surprise you'd find chidon's eager duke doing the quaintest curtsies to that prim saint by haste thee luke and deeper into her rock den bold castle franco's magdalen you'd find retreated from the ken of that robed council-keeping sir as if the tizian thinks of her and is not rather gravely bent on seeing for himself what toys are these his progeny invent what litter now the board employs whereon he signed a document that got him murdered each enjoys its night so well you cannot break the sport up so indeed must make more stay with me for others sake she speaks to-morrow if a harp-string say is used to tie the jasmine back that overfloods my room with sweets contrive your zorzi somehow meets my zanzi if the ribbon's black the three are watching keep away your gondola let zorzi wreathe a mesh of water weeds about its prow as if he unaware had struck some key or bridge foot stair that i may throw a paper out as you and he go underneath there's zanzi's vigilant taper safe are we only one minute more to-night with me resume your past self of a month ago be you the bashful gallant i will be the lady with the colder breast than snow now bow you as becomes nor touch my hand more than i touch yours when i step to land just say all thanks siora heart to heart and lips to lips yet once more ere we part clasp me and make me thine as mine thou art he is surprised and stopped it was ordained to be so sweet and best comes now beneath thine eyes upon thy breast still kiss me care not for the cowards care only to put aside thy beauteous hair my blood will hurt the three i do not scorn to death because they never lived but i have lived indeed and so yet one more kiss can die End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Cleopatra by William Wetmore Story From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 2, Love, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia Cleopatra Here, Charmian, take my bracelets. They bar with a purple stain my arms turn over my pillows they are hot where i have lain open the lattice wider a gauze over my bosom throw and let me inhale the odours that over the garden blow i dreamed i was with my antony and in his arms i lay ah me the vision has vanished the music has died away the flame and the perfume have perished as this spiced aromatic pastille that wound the blue smoke of its odour is now but an ashy hill scatter upon me rose leaves they cool me after my sleep and with sandal odours fan me till into my veins they creep reach down the lute and play me a melancholy tune 
to rhyme with the dream that has vanished and the slumbering afternoon there drowsing in golden sunlight loiters the slow smooth nile through slender papyri that cover the weary crocodile the lotus lolls on the water and opens its heart of gold and over its broad leaf pavement never a ripple is rolled the twilight breeze is too lazy those feathery palms to wave and yon little cloud is motionless as a stone above a grave ah me this lifeless nature oppresses my heart and brain oh for a storm and thunder for lightning and wild fierce rain fling down that lute i hate it take rather his buckler and sword and crash them and clash them together till this sleeping world is stirred hark to my indian beauty my cockatoo creamy white with roses under his feathers that flashes across the light look listen as backward and forward to his hoop of gold he clings how he trembles with crest uplifted and shrieks as he madly swings o oh, cockatoo shriek for antony cry come my love come home shriek antony 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 till he hears you even in rome there leave me and take from my chamber that stupid little gazelle with its bright black eyes so meaningless and its silly tinkling bell take him my nerves he vexes the thing without blood or brain or by the body of isis i'll snap his thin neck in twain leave me to gaze at the landscape mistily stretching away where the afternoon's opaline tremors over the mountains quivering play till the fiercer splendour of sunset pours from the west its fire and melted as in a crucible their earthly forms expire and the bald blear skull of the desert with glowing mountains is crowned that burning like molten jewels circle its temples round i will lie and dream of the past time eons of thought away and through the jungle of memory loosen my fancy to play when a smooth and velvety tiger ribbed with yellow and black supple and cushion-footed i wandered where never the track of a human creature had rustled the silence of mighty woods and fierce in a tyrannous freedom i knew but the law of my moods the elephant trumpeting started when he heard my footstep near and the spotted giraffes fled wildly in a yellow cloud of fear i sucked in the noontide splendour quivering along the glade or yawning panting and dreaming basked in the tamarisk shade till i heard my wild mate roaring as the shadows of night came on to brood in the tree's thick branches and the shadow of sleep was gone then i roused and roared in answer and unsheathed from my cushioned feet my curving claws and stretched me and wandered my mate to greet we toyed in the amber moonlight upon the warm flat sand and struck at each other our massive arms how powerful he was and grand his yellow eyes flashed fiercely as he crouched and gazed at me and his quivering tail like a serpent twitched curving nervously then like a storm he seized me with a wild triumphant cry and we met as two clouds in heaven when the thunder before them fly we grappled and struggled together for his love like his rage was rude and his teeth in the swelling folds of my neck at times in our play drew blood often another suitor for i was flexile and fair fought for me in the moonlight while i lay couching there till his blood was drained by the desert and ruffled with triumph and power he licked me and lay beside me to breathe him a vast half-hour then down to the fountain we loitered where the antelopes came to drink like a bolt we sprang upon them ere they had time to shrink we drank their blood and crushed them and tore them limb from limb 
and the hungriest lion doubted ere he disputed with him that was a life to live for not this weak human life with its frivolous bloodless passions its poor and petty strife come to my arms my hero the shadows of twilight grow and the tiger's ancient fierceness in my veins begins to flow come not cringing to sue me take me with triumph and power as a warrior storms a fortress i will not shrink or cower come as you came in the desert ere we were women and men when the tiger passions were in us and love as you loved me then end of poem this recording is in the public domain love by thomas kibble hervey from the world's best poetry volume two love part two read for librivox dot org by sonia love there are those who say the lover's heart is in the loved ones merged oh never by love's own warm art so cold a plea was urged no hearts that love hath crowned or crossed love fondly knits together but not a thought or you is lost that made a part of either it is an ill-told tale that tells of hearts by love made one he grows who near another's dwells more conscious of his own in each spring up new thoughts and powers that mid love's warm clear weather together tend like climbing flowers and turning grow together such fictions blink love's better part yield up its half of bliss the wells are in the neighbor heart when there is thirst in this there findeth love the passion flowers on which it learns to thrive makes honey in another's bowers but brings it home to hive love's life is in its own replies to each low beat it beats smiles back the smiles sighs back the sighs and every throb repeats then since one loving heart still throws two shadows in love's sun how should two loving hearts compose and mingle into one end of poem this recording is in the public domain keats last sonnet by john keats from the world's best poetry volume two love part two read for LibriVox.org by anusha ayer keats's last sonnet bright star would i were steadfast as thou art not in lone splendor hung aloft the night and watching with eternal lids apart like nature's patient sleepless eremite the moving waters at their priest-like task of pure ablution round earth's human shores or gazing on the new soft fallen mask of snow upon the mountains and the moors no yet still steadfast still unchangeable pillowed upon my fair love's ripening breast to feel forever its soft fall and swell awake forever in a sweet unrest still still to hear her tender taken breath and so live ever or else swoon to death end of poem this recording is in the public domain stanzas written on the road between florence and pisa by lord byron from the world's best poetry volume two love part two read for librivox dot org by craig franklin stanzas written on the road between florence and pisa o oh, talk not to me of a name great in story the days of our youth are the days of our glory and the myrtle and ivy of sweet two-and-twenty are worth all your laurels though ever so plenty 
what are garlands and crowns to the brow that is wrinkled tis but as a dead flower with may dew be sprinkled then away with all such from the head that is hoary what care i for the wreaths that can only give glory o fame if i ere took delight in thy praises twas less for the sake of thy high sounding phrases than to see the bright eyes of the dear one discover she thought that i was not unworthy to love her there chiefly i sought thee there only i found thee her glance was the best of the rays that surround thee when it sparkled or aught that was bright in my story i knew it was love and i felt it was glory end of poem this recording is in the public domain the song of the camp by bayard taylor from the world's best poetry volume two love part two read for LibriVox.org by anusha ayer as the narrator craig franklin as the soldiers and thomas peter as the guardsman the song of the camp give us a song the soldiers cried the outer trenches guarding when the heated guns of the camps allied grew weary of bombarding the dark red arm in silent scoff lay grim and threatening under and the tawny mound of the malakoff no longer belched its thunder there was a pause a guardsman said we storm the forts to-morrow sing while we may another day will bring enough of sorrow they lay along the battery's side below the smoking cannon brave hearts from severn and from clyde and from the banks of shannon they sang of love and not of fame forgot was britain's glory each heart recalled a different name but all sang annie laurie voice after voice caught up the song until its tender passion rose like an anthem rich and strong their battle eve confession dear girl her name he dared not speak but as the song grew louder something upon the soldier's cheek washed off the stains of powder beyond the darkening ocean burned the bloody sunset's embers while the crimean valleys learned how english love remembers and once again a fire of hell reigned on the russian quarters with scream of shot and burst of shell and bellowing of the mortars and irish nora's eyes are dim for a singer dumb and gory and english mary mourns for him who sang of annie laurie sleep soldiers still in honoured rest your truth and valour wearing the bravest are the tenderest the loving are the daring end of poem this recording is in the public domain To Fidessa by Bartholomew Griffin From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 2 Love, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org By Thomas Peter To Fidessa Tongue, never cease to sing Fidessa's praise Heart, however she deserve, conceive the best Eyes, stand amazed to see her beauty's rays Lips steal one kiss and be forever blessed hands touch that hand wherein your life is closed breast lock up fast in thee thy life's sole treasure arms still embrace and never be disclosed feet run to her without or pace or measure tongue heart eyes lips hands breast arms feet consent to do true homage to your queen lovely fair gent wise virtuous sober sweet whose like shall never be hath never been oh that i were all tongue her praise to show then surely my poor heart were freed from woe end of poem this recording is in the public domain
Meeting at Night by Robert Browning From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 2, Love, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Anusha Ayer Meeting at Night The grey sea and the long black land And the yellow half-moon large and low And the startling little waves That leap in fiery ringlets from their sleep as I gain the cove with pushing prow And quench its speed in the slushy sand. Then a mile of warm sea-scented beach, Three fields to cross till a farm appears. A tap at the pane, the quick sharp scratch And blue spurt of a lighted match, And a voice less loud through its joys and fears than the two hearts beating each to each end of poem this recording is in the public domain charlie mccree by william j hoppin from the world's best poetry volume 2 love part 2 read for librivox.org by sonia charlie mccree Come over, come over the river to me, if ye are my laddie, bo Charlie McCree. Here's Mary McPherson and Susie O'Lynn, who say you're faint-hearted and down a plunge in. But the dark rolling water, though deep as the sea, I know will na scare ye, nor keep ye from me. For stout is your back, and strong is your arm, and the heart in your bosom is faithful and warm. Come over, come over the river to me, if ye am my lady, bold Charlie McCree. I see him, I see him, he's plunged in the tide, his strong arms are dashing the big waves aside. Oh, the dark cooling water shoots swift as the sea, but blithe is the glance of his bonny blue e and his cheeks are like roses to a butts on a bough who says ye're faint-hearted my brave charlie now ho ho foaming river ye may roar as ye go but ye canna bear charlie to the dark loch below come over come over the river to me my true-hearted laddie my charlie mccree he's sinking he's sinking oh what shall i do strike out charlie boldly ten strokes sent you through he's sinking oh heaven never fear man never fear i've a kiss for you charlie as soon as you're here he rises i see him five strokes charlie mare he's shaking the wet from his bonny brown hair he conquers the current he gains on the sea oh where is the swimmer like charlie mccree come over the river but once come to me and i'll love you forever dear charlie mccree he's sinking he's gone oh god it is i it is i who have killed him help help he must die help help how oh, he rises strike out and you're free oh bravely done charlie once more now for me now cling to the rock now give us your hand you're safe dearest charlie you're safe on the land come rest in my bosom if there you can sleep i cannot speak to you i only can weep you've crossed the wild river you've risked all for me and i'll part from you never dear charlie mccree end of poem this recording is in the public domain. Hope Deferred by Anonymous from The World's Best Poetry, Volume 2, Love, Part 2, read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama. Hope Deferred His Hand at Last by his own fingers writ i catch my name upon the wayworn sheet his hand oh reach it to me quick and yet scarce can i hold so fast my pulses beat o oh, feast of soul o oh, banquet richly spread o oh, passion lettered scroll from o'er the sea like a fresh burst of life to one long dead joy 
strength and bright content come back with thee long prayed and waited for through months so drear each day methought my waiting heart must break why is it that our loved ones grow more dear the more we suffer for their sweetest sake his hand at last each simple word aglow with truthful tenderness and promise sweet now to my daily tasks i'll singing go fed by the music of this wayworn sheet anonymous end of poem this recording is in the public domain the old maid by george barlow from the world's best poetry volume two love part two read for librivox dot org by sonia the old maid she gave her life to love she never knew what other women give their all to gain others were fickle she was passing true she gave pure love and faith without a stain she never married suitors came and went the dark eyes flashed their love on one alone her life was passed in quiet and content the old love reigned no rival shared the throne think you her life was wasted vale and hill blossomed in summer and white winter came the blue eyes stiffened on the silent drill all times and seasons found her still the same her heart was full of sweetness till the end what once she gave she never took away through all her youth she loved one faithful friend she loves him now her hair is growing gray End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Loveliness of Love by George Darley From The World's Best Poetry, Volume 2, Love, Part 2 Read for LibriVox.org by Lian Yao The Loveliness of Love it is not beauty i demand a crystal brow the moon's despair nor the snow's daughter a white hand nor mermaid's yellow pride of hair tell me not of your starry eyes your lips that seem on roses fed your breasts where cupid tumbling lies nor sleeps for kissing of his bed a bloomy pair of her male cheeks like hebe's in her ruddiest hours a breath that softer music speaks than summer winds are wearing flowers these are but gourds nay what are lips coral beneath the ocean stream whose brink when your adventurous slips full oft he perisheth in them and what are cheeks but in signs off that wave hot youth to fields of blood did helen's breast though ne'er so soft do greece or ilium any good eyes can with baleful ardour burn poison can breath that erst perfumed there's many a white hand holds an urn with lovers hearts to dust consumed for crystal brows there's naught within they are but empty cells for pride he who the siren's hair would win is mostly strangled in the tide give me instead of beauty's bust a tender heart a loyal mind which with temptation i would trust yet never linked with error find one in whose gentle bosom i could pour my secret heart of woes like the care burdened honey fly that hides his murmurs in the rose my earthly comforter whose love so indefeasible might be that when my spirit wandered above hers could not stay for sympathy end of poem this recording is in the public domain